lift it up, controlled, and all of a sudden, oh, well, let me show you in slow motion what just happened. Do you see that pop? Pop. 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 Yeah, I hurt myself, and you can even see the deformity in my pec right there. There's a big hole in my chest. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Master. I'm your host, AZ Araujo, and I want to thank you for joining me today, the second week of January in 2022. And I got to tell you, like, I remember coming into this, uh, this new year with so much momentum, right? And you may be feeling that as well. You have so much momentum, so many things working your way, and it seems like nothing can go wrong, right? You've already endured all the pains all the tragedies, maybe health and sickness. You're thinking, nothing's going to stop me now. And then just like that, something does occur, right? And sometimes it's difficult to, to uh, proceed and move forward when, when things don't go your way. And what's, what's great about today is that five years ago to the day, five years ago to the day, January 10th, 2017, I came in the same way. The vision was so big. We came off of a, a, a business uh, planning meeting. We set our targets, and I was thinking nothing's going to stop me. And in fact, I had everything going my way. I was coming off one of my most successful years in 2016, uh, getting myself out of some major financial problems, um, and I started to see the light. Right at first, I was so I was drowning in debt, drowning in, in just my, my my past still haunting me that I started finally seeing my financial problems kind of go by the wayside. And after 10 years, we bought our a house uh, for the first time in 10 years, and, and it gave us a new start to our relationship. Uh, we didn't realize how much we were holding ourselves back being in our old house. And my marriage started coming around. Uh, there was less fights and more connection. We had better conversations. And again, just like that, everything changed. Um, I was, I was really pushing myself uh, with my body, and uh, I pushed myself a little too much, and I didn't listen to my body. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a video that I recorded back in 2017, and if you've been around, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I tore both of my tendons. And it could have been one of those things where it could have shifted my life for the worst, you know, and, and we got to think about that. So as I, as I show this video, I want you to think about how, you know, obstacles or sickness or disappointments, tragedy, how that is a pivotal point in our lives that we have to decide what we're about. We have to decide where we're going to go. But I'm going to go ahead and show you this, this video to showcase to you what happened just five years ago on this very day. Please roll the tape. All right, so let me tell you what happened this morning. 5.30 in the morning, this is 315 pounds. I'm feeling pretty good. And... Um, I worked out chest on Monday, but I figured, hey, I can do this again, right? So 315, here we go. I was able to get it controlled and done. Boom. Felt good. I was like, okay, I'm done. But here's one of the things you'll notice is, do you see how I was kind of already feeling the pain? Well, I didn't listen to my body. Here's what happened. This is 335 pounds. Lift it up, controlled, and all of a sudden... Oh, well, let me show you in slow motion what just happened. Do you see that pop? Pop. 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 Yeah, I hurt myself. And you can even see the deformity in my pec right there. There's a big hole in my chest. Oh, both my muscles cramped. Oh, I heard it. Fuck. Okay, so that was my morning. And I just got back. From All right, so that was in 2017, and it, it was painful, right? And, you know, the first thought that comes to our minds when something doesn't go our way is that, you know, it's never going to happen for us, right? Uh, this is an indicator. This is a, a reason. This is a, a, a sign that things are not supposed to progress. And we always talk about why we have to endure, why we have to continue to condition ourselves, right? A conditioning process so we can, we can endure. We can endure and then we can expand from that point. But I remember being in that place where I, I almost went into a victim mindset of like, why did this happen? Like, this was going to be the biggest year. Now I can't reach my goals. Now I can't do this. Now I can't do that. 
And I want to go ahead and read what I wrote down just a few hours later after I popped my tendons, okay? And uh, so I, I go into showing the video and it says, um, the, this morning started out with exercising like any other morning hundreds of times before. The difference, I didn't listen to my gut intuition and avoided the clues. Today's strength exercise was a one rep max on bench press. Awesome, I thought to myself as I saw the agenda on the board. Then I started thinking about how I worked out my chest the day prior. No big deal. I'm not sore. I feel great today. So I worked my way up to 315. Boom, got it, controlled and with power. But something was a little different. I felt pain, a pain on my right upper chest. That's tough, I thought to myself. That's enough, I thought to myself. My spotting partner said he was going to, for, to go for 335. I'm going to do it too, I remember saying. Against my better judgment and avoiding the clues from the previous lift, I proceeded with the lift. As I'm descending on the lift, I hear two nasty suction-type no noises, one right after another. I felt the pain immediately. If you've ever heard a muscle tear, it's not a pretty sight, sight, uh, sound, or sight for that matter. The sound was so loud that my good friend, uh, Isaiah, who was holding the camera, heard it all and thought it was a skeletal break. A part of me is disappointed how things turned out this morning. I pride myself on being tuned with my voice. I rely on it direct, to direct me with decisions and actions. I was it was telling me to stop. My body sent the appropriate si signals to stop. All the clues were there, and I avoided them. Now I just pay the consequence. I will need surgery on both sides of my chest, not the way I wanted to start the new year. The clues pointing south. It really gets me thinking that there have always been clues when things went south in my life. As a matter of fact, there have even been clues when things go expectant, exceptionally well. When I choose to avoid the clues, there will always be consequences. I'm going to repeat that, not for you, but for me. I need to drive that into my head. When I, choice, when I choose to avoid the clues, there will always be consequences. This statement may, be, may hold true for most of us, if not all of us. Yet, we act surprised and even victimized when we struggle financially, when our businesses stops working, when our spouse wants a divorce, or unexpected surgery needs to take place. We fail to see that it didn't ha all happen by accident. It was all an accumulation and byproduct of avoiding the clues. Then I uh, finished this up by saying, where in your life are you avoiding the clues that are screaming at you to pay attention in your body, marriage, children, business? Know that if you choose to continue to avoid them, there will be consequences. So don't act surprised or victimized. It's only a matter of time. So, I mean, this is a lesson that I learned through and through and realizing that, you know, there, we're always going to get sidetracked by one form or another. Some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is, it is just going to come from, you know, left field. It's not always something that we cause, um, but it's always something we can correct. Okay, it's not always something that we caused, but we can always correct. And one of the things that I realize is that when problems arise, there, there's three specific things that people choose to do or look for. One is a reason to stop, right? There's a reason. It's too tough. And I, if I get injured, then I don't have to do this thing. If I get sick, then I don't have to show up, right? There's a reason we're looking for. Another, another aspect of that is relief. Some of us look for relief. Uh, relief from the monotony uh, of doing the work, right? Relief that, uh, that we finally got what we were seeking. We closed big deals. Now we're looking for relief. We're looking for a way to, to say, okay, I, I can take it easy now. And finally, what I want all of us to consider is that that, that is a moment we need to rise. Not look for a reason, not look for relief, but a moment to rise. And I talk about this often, right, about how we need to condition ourselves on a daily basis, doing the small things. And if I start to define what conditioning means, because you've all heard it, and maybe you don't realize what the definition is or, or what we're looking to, to look to do, but conditioning is the process of training or accustoming to behave in a certain way uh, or to accept certain circumstances. Okay, to behave a certain way or to accept a certain circumstances. I realized that I have to just keep going. In that moment, I had a choice. I can look for that reason to say I cannot do what I wanted to do in 2017. But instead, I knew I had too much conditioning. I endured too much over the previous years. I've overcame too much to say now I stop. I would have thrown all that away, all that momentum away. 
disappointment doesn't mean it's supposed to stop you. Disappointment is a, is a way to, to forge you. Okay, sickness is a way to forge you. Tragedy is a way to forge you. Not to tell you, okay, because of this, now there's a reason for you to stop. Or, hey, you, you see the momentum, now you can seek relief and also take it easy. It's meant for you to rise. And I had a choice at that particular moment, say I can give up on my 2017 goals, I could give up on the task and the agenda I had set forth for that day, for that week. I decided to rise. But I would never have been able to make that, that decision to rise if I didn't have the conditioning, if I didn't have the endurance. And when I begin to, to uh, define endurance is the fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. Without giving way. I'm going to read that again. The fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. It was unpleasant. It was difficult. I wanted to shut down. I wanted to act like a victim of why it happened. It's only January 10th of a new year. Why did this happen to me? But I decided to rise. I decided to keep going. Because I realized that if I can't overcome this, there's no way I'm going to get my goals. If I didn't overcome this and force myself to continue to move forward, then I just stay there. Then I just see it as a, way for, as, a, as a sign for me to hold back. When in fact it was meant for me to get stronger, better, more experienced. It reminded me that everything great doesn't come easy. It comes at a cost. And am I willing to do what's required to overcome those costs? That same day, after visiting the doctor, I ended, up holding, uh, I ended up coming back and just documenting my, my process. And there's a picture of me and, and Isaiah where we're, you know, just working through the day. Saying, because I told myself I wasn't going to just stop there. And if you can show that photo there, I set up shop at my house. And I said, I'm not just going to give up there. And the following day, I'm not sure if I, I even have a picture of it, but the following day I ended up going into a, a sales meeting. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't, I couldn't go beyond what, what was, you know, the, the physicality uh, that I needed to, to wave my arms above my head. I couldn't do those things. It was hard even putting on my coat, my jacket. But I knew I needed to continue that momentum. I can keep going regardless of whatever happens in my day, whether it's a high, whether it's a low. I understand that the game is about just continuing to go. And I remember my coach saying that many, many times before. Because as you're going through this journey, you're going to reach your highs. You're going to see that. You're going to experience your highs. You're going to experience your fair share of lows. And whether it's high or low, it's not meant for you to stop. It's meant for you to go. That was a low in my life. I wanted to shut down. I wanted to act victimized by the circumstances. But I understand the game. I continue to go. Because I needed that. As a new set of obstacles were going to come my way later on that year. And I needed to have the mental space, the capacity, the endurance to continue to move forward. So as you're conditioning yourself, right, the process of training or customizing your way to behave a certain way, you learn to endure through unpleasant or difficult situations. But those two items alone are not going to get you where you want to go. Part of this is realizing you got to continue to push the envelope. You got to expand. You got to broaden or develop something. You got to broaden or develop yourself. Many people go through the motions. Many people say, hey, AZ, I'm at the gym every day. But yet they don't see any improvement because they're not expanding. They're not pushing themselves to, to uh, be a better uh, person in the gym or a stronger person. They're not doing what's required in the kitchen. So they're not going to see the differences of someone who decides to embark on something different in their day-to-day. -day. 
Expansion is what the game is all about. But it only comes on the back of increasing your capacity. And we all have choices. We all have choices today. And maybe things didn't start off the way you wanted. That doesn't mean the rest of the year is going to turn out that way. It's on you to decide what you're going to do about it. I'll show you what I decided to do about it. The very next day, guess what I'm doing? Go ahead and fade into that. I'm in the gym. I can't work out my arms, so I'm working out my legs. And this was the starting point of my triathlon career and my ability to go and, and, and then do a, uh, um, an Ironman. And I had it visually all over my, my body. Let me just show you some photos here. This is what it looked like. That was the first, the first time I, I got an idea of what a sleeve would look like. But it was all made of blood. It was all made of bruising. And I had it physically. But more importantly, I, I had to overcome it mentally. I had to overcome it mentally. And we all have that decision. Are you going to come up with a reason? Or are you seeking relief? Or are you, looking like, or, or are you going to do what top producers in life do? is rise up to the occasion. That's what I'm asking you to do, and that's what the conditioning process will do, allow you to do. But if you can't do the small steps, then you will never endure. You want everything a top producer wants, someone who's very successful in your industry, and you become obsessed. You become obsessed with success, but you're becoming obsessed with somebody else's success. You're becoming uh, obsessed on how they live, on, how, on what they drive and where they visit. And what you're lacking is the conditioning. You're lacking the endurance. And there's no way you can expand if you don't at least start there. So as you start looking at your day, listen, like there's going to be problems. But you will never become a top producer if you're thrown off at the moment you get sick or you break down at the moment there's an argument at home. Or if you become depressed at the moment you lose a deal. You can't be that person. You can't, you can't deal with the pressures of life, the stresses of life, when you give up after, at the moment you get sick. You're seeking relief. Or break down and decide not to market because of that argument at home. You can't be that top producer. You can't push yourself to the top 1% or the top half percent, selling millions and millions in, in, in product, in, in, in real estate. See, you're never going to get there unless you start doing what's required. The small steps every day. And you see me holding up this book on a consistent basis. It's meant for you to, be in a, to condition yourself so you can endure. And that gives you the ability to expand. But most of you are trying to step, uh, skip over the work. You're trying to circumvent that process, and you just want to expand. It's never possible. Because what's required from you as a top producer, you don't have what it takes right now. But it doesn't mean you won't get there. What I have today, if I didn't overcome those items and didn't decide to keep going, I would have never been able to handle the pressures and the stresses of today. So however your, your year started, maybe you're on this momentum streak. Remember, don't look for that relief. Maybe things happen. Maybe you're sick. COVID got gotcha. you. You're out for two weeks. That doesn't mean you have to be out for two weeks. There's always something to do. But if you were looking for a reason, you got your reason. If you want to be able to point to why you can't get what you want, if you want to give another excuse to your spouse and your kids, you got your reason. Or you can rise and you can say it's only a matter of time. I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. I hope this resonated with you. I hope you're able to see the own patterns, your own patterns on how you approach life. But we all ha always have choices. Are you going to look for relief? Maybe you're looking for a reason, but I'm asking you to rise. Thank you again, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Badass Agents Podcast, brought to you by AZ Associates and Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. 
You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting us directly at badassagents.com. And of course, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider.